Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos for another entry to the Three Blind Mice monthly build off. This time I'm taking this slightly paint damaged Hot Wheels hauling gas and turning it into something unique. Hopefully. This casting has been around since 2011 in a variety of designs, mostly of a corporate nature. I may be wrong, but I don't think any have been in a fuel company design, rather oddly for a vehicle named hauling gas. I probably won't be alone in doing this, but my intention is to take this model back to its rather obvious design cues and roots. That's because this truck is loosely based on the 1933 Texaco Diamond T Doodlebug, as seen here. Now there are some important differences, and this model is by no means a carbon copy of the Doodlebug, but I'm going to give the casting a retro Texaco livery as an homage. The castings all had these chunky real rider tyres that don't suit the look I'm going for, so I shall trade these up for some green light jewelies. I'll also remove the paint from the base and leave that chrome. There's this huge plastic interior incorporating the external tank detailing, wheel arch interiors and the cab interior. Inside is a transparency for the front windows. The Doodlebugs were commissioned by Texaco in the early 1930s in an effort to modernise the company's brand image. The project, undertaken by designers Norman Belgedis and Walter Teague, also produced the Texaco Star T logo that's still in use today. Approximately six Doodlebugs were made, with bodies produced by Heil Co and the chassis built by truck producer Diamond T. Once the model has been taken apart and the post drilled and tapped, I can begin the long and laborious process of removing the Zamac coating. But I'll just show you this part because it's more interesting. It takes a while to reach this stage as it's so hard to see all of the small Zamac fragments on the bare metal. So the doodle bugs were designed to look very modern with a streamlined and aerodynamic body. The cabin was formed into the overall body shape, very unusual for the time. It also didn't have running boards, bumpers, a hood or cowl, unlike its contemporaries. The windscreen too was advanced, using compound glass that allowed the semicircular curvature. It likely had a rear mounted six cylinder engine. The driver would have had a microphone installed in the engine compartment, hooked up to speakers in the cabin to allow them to know when to change gear. And at only 6 feet tall, or 1.8 meters, it was very short for a tanker truck. This was just one of many coats of primer required, as each coat would highlight some more of the mist Zamac that would need rubbing down. As mentioned previously, I'll be leaving the base unpainted, but I will polish it up, mostly to give the exhaust tips an added shine. The casting would need some serious modification to completely resemble the real Doodlebug. I don't think the original came with dual chrome tip tailpipe somehow. I quite enjoy polishing the metal bases using my rotary tool and auto saw. The finish is usually pretty decent. Here I'm using a clean buffing pad to remove any leftover black marks. So on to painting them. Both the tank plastics and the body are coated in TS8 Italian Red. You'll note there's a slight difference in shade of the red on the plastics than the metal. The TS8 Red is so versatile. It looks as good as this on the Texaco truck as it does on a Ferrari. I now dunk the window piece in astonished wood floor polish to revive the shine a little. Next I can begin my extensive detailing. First of all, I use my chrome pen to fill out the compartment lids on top of the tanker insert before detailing the cab. 
When the pen paint is set, I coat the interior in Citadel. Then I use my Micron pen to do the fine black details, such as the tank top rivets. A shot of my hand here as I paint the headlights white. And then the grill slats are chromed up too. The chrome is used as an undercoat for the turn signals and for the rooftop running lights. Then I fetch my thicker pen again for the bumpers and then do the same with the rear detailing. The last patch of chrome goes on the sides, though I forgot to film where I coated the window surrounds and door hinges. Colour is added to the tail lights and side lights. Same for the rooftop lighting. Between the chrome grill slats, I draw in the darker areas using the Micron pen again. And also the interior of the tailpipes. With that part of detailing done, the whole truck gets doused in Citadel on all its curves and creases. The Citadel always works best on the door castings or on 90 degree angles. It really makes these side compartments stand out too. Anyway, with the bulk of that done, I move on to the final stage, applying the decals. I thought to myself about either sign writing or designing lettering to replicate the Doodlebug Texaco wording. However, I had these 1960s style logos going spare, so I decided to use these instead. I cut the lettering out of the logo to attach to the rear as the decal would have been too large to comfortably fit on the back. With all three attached, I brush on some setting solution and then roll off the excess. Okay, now to reassemble the thing. The first item to return is the window piece. Over that goes the tank and interior plastics. Then the base is attached by pushing down over the front and rear rivet posts. It is then secured with a screw. So here is how the hauling gas Punisher edition looked when we kicked off. Usually these kinds of castings aren't my cup of tea, but there is certainly a lot of potential to create something a bit different. I imagine a few other creators have done something similar now I've said that. It's time now to turn this truck back into a tanker. So here she is in all her red glory, my homage to the Texaco Doodlebug of the 30s. There's too much detailing that's gone into it to list, but take note of the window surrounds, door handles and hinges, as there wasn't footage of these being done. I think the jewelly green light chrome rims look great on this truck, sitting in those rear arches nicely. The only thing that didn't work out all that well was the red on red decals. I didn't really pick up on this until using the Mr. Mark. If you've enjoyed this build, be sure to check out the other creators, leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Do check out my Diecast Restos Instagram and my Patreon to support and see all my latest. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.